So today is the first day I'm going back to my classroom and I don't know how long. And I just went downstairs to like leave and I'm like, okay, keys, purse, good. And then I think to myself, I'm going to school. I need school stuff. And I was like, oh, I'll just grab my laptop. And then I remembered that means I have to bring a charger and a water bottle. And the moral of the story is I forgot how to go to school. classroom for the first time since May when school got out and today's plan is just to kind of look at what we're dealing with because I don't even know where to start at this point and there's still so many questions about what school is going to look like so the plan is just to go and look. Also fun fact side story went for a run this morning biffed it here's what happened Yeah, pretty gruesome. So my knee hurts right now a decent amount. Our promise to ourselves is that we will not cry. No matter how stressful it is when we walk into that classroom, how overwhelming it feels, we're not gonna cry today, okay? I'm gonna have you hold me accountable to that. So here we go, day one. If you'll remember when I came back last year, I was like, oh, I don't wanna be here. And I just felt like totally un, Meh. I just didn't really wanna come, but I'm like excited to be here right now. Like this is about to be really good and I'm excited to try and figure this out. I think part of it is that I haven't really been here since March, but I'm excited to try and figure out how to put this back together. So the plan today is to just like take it all in and figure out what I need to do so that when I come back the rest of the days this week and next week and the week after and things like that, I know like, do I need to buy things? Do I need to throw away things? Do I need to move stuff? Like what exactly do I need to do? They got me a new paper towel dispenser. Ah, I'm so happy. The last one was a joke. And since I need kids to be washing their hands all day, every day, this ah, melts my heart. All right, I've done the licking around. I've written some initial things down on the board that I need to take care of that I know we'll forget about. And now I need to like start doing things. But my classroom is like so switch swatched right now that I'm trying to decide if I want to put everything back where it goes or if I want to change things around. Right now, the only thing that I know for sure I have to move somewhere and that I'm definitely going to leave in the same spot is my desk and it's too far forward. It needs to be scooted back. So I'm going to go ahead and just move that. And then I guess I'll start moving furniture around to where it goes. The problem is I don't even know for sure like what our requirements are going to be as far as like desk spacing or orientation and a lot of fun things to deal with with that but I can move all the other furniture I can leave the desks because they're not in a spot where other furniture needs to be right now so maybe I'll just do all the other furniture and figure out the desks later this is called me being in denial that this school year is about to be awful furniture is moved back to the area of the room that it needs to be in if not the exact spot that it will be in. I have not done anything with the desks because I don't know what even to do with those so I'm gonna leave that till the very last possible moment. I have so much work to do on the counter in my back room. Look at this. Like you can see it's just covered in boxes full of paper that need to be sorted but I'm hot and sweaty and my plan was only to come here for a couple hours today because I didn't even eat lunch so I'm gonna be hangry in a minute here. So I'm going to work at my desk for a little bit to figure out how I want to organize some things and make a list of the copies. And then we will come back tomorrow with the intention to do the back room. So if you notice, all these shelves are empty now because we just had a slight change in plans. I tried to move this bottom dowel over so I can fit more baskets and immediately everything started falling off the shelves. So while I held it up with one hand, I took everything off the shelves very quickly before it could all fall. So we're doing some major renovations unintentionally now. <laughs> All 
All right, I have finished all the work I'm going to do for today, which was the entire back room. And I did more things than I thought I would do and some things I decided not to do. So I'm gonna show you really fast what my back room is looking like. So if you've ever watched one of my classroom setup vlogs, you're gonna realize this looks very similar. So the crisis was averted. Everything's back on the shelf. I made a couple minor adjustments down here. All of this is the same. I added one extra basket because I had more papers that I needed. And then I have cute colorful folders at the front there but that's all still the same stuff that used to be there. Those are all the same things. That's still the same stuff. I did organize this cabinet. So it's got whew, all the extra supplies in it. There's crayons and markers and highlighters and glue and folders and then Play-Doh and um, some of my things up there. These shelves over here are all the exact same as they used to be. I added more binders down there because I'm scared that the shelf is going to fall down, so I didn't put as many back up there. This is all my guided reading books still. Those are all teacher manuals for various things. These are all math manipulatives. I readjusted some of the stuff up here so it looks a little bit more clean. This is language arts and then math games, the language arts and math activities, language arts and math activities, I relabeled those containers so you can actually read what's on them. I replaced what used to be in that with something that didn't used to be in that and added a couple more containers up there. It's all labeled and beautiful. That shelf is all my personal stuff and some extra containers. This is all supplies, science, and then there's some cleaning stuff under the sink. My beautiful new paper towel dispenser. And then I moved these two crates over here. So this crate used to be over there on that counter but it's over here now, it still has all the same stuff in it. And then this crate used to be what is this, but I needed to be able to use the folders in it and that other green crate is not very great. So this has all my center supplies in it. And since those go together, I moved them over here so that I could have a little bit more space on this counter since I added a third basket. Yeah. Basically, there's a lot of things in boxes and baskets, but they're all labeled and they're all where I want them to be. And they're semi-color coordinated and this back room just feels very, put together. Now in a dream world, I would love to redo these countertops white um, with like some contact paper, but it's just not worth that. So this is how it's going to be. This is the back room. And that was my big project for today. And it's finished. Oh, one other part of my big project that I did is making this special list. You can buy you can buy on TPT tons of stuff that are like centers for the whole year, but I have plenty of centers activities. So I just went through and put all the weeks, what our phonics and word work concepts were, and then I planned two spelling centers, two word work centers, and a writing activity for the entire year. I just went through, okay, these are all the activities I already have, and I just made a plan. It's not firm and determined, but this is like, okay, every week I don't have to figure out what I wanna do. I can look and say, oh, this week we're doing this activity. So I got that finalized as well. So that's gonna do it for classroom setup days one and two. It's beautiful when you've been in a classroom for a long enough time and you've been teaching for enough time that you feel pretty set up even before I got here. So I'm feeling really good about this school year. Okay, so I'm back in my classroom today. This will be my third year in this classroom. So there's not very much to set up and I'm only changing a couple things because I finally hit my stride with a lot of stuff. Insert disclaimer that literally nothing will be the same this year so I'm currently just pretending life is normal and we'll deal with the crazy on Thursday but right now we're pretending like 2020 is a normal happy school year and nothing crazy is going on okay okay so I'm going to show you what I've been working on today today was this bulletin board so it used to have like an acronym strategy for writing and I decided I didn't want to do that anymore. So I made some modifications. I also chopped off the bottom half of the board because children ripped the wrapping paper and wrote on the white paper. So I just trimmed it down. So let me walk you through this. This is all from Target Dollar Spot and everything here I made myself. I printed out and colored and glued on. I'm planning to get clear contact paper to put over it so that nothing falls off, okay? So what I did is I took the four things that are gonna be most important to me in their writing and made visual symbols to represent them. So this is our capitalization section, people, dates, holidays, letter I, places, and the start of sentences, all of those need to be capitalized. So I have little picture reminders because we'll talk about that in class and I don't need to have tons of words on here. Punctuation, handwriting, I just gave a good and a bad example. I'm pretty proud of my horrible handwriting there. Spelling, look at the word wall, sound it out, circle it if you're not sure. And then this is something I've had up since I first started teaching. 
Um, it's a grading scale for the students to check and see if their writing is meeting their standards. So we expect them to be right here. This is second grade level, that's above and beyond, and those are below. So I have some examples of what writing in those categories might look like, and this way they can kind of self-check with the rubric here. Love having that, because then my advanced kids who are like, oh, I'm totally done, you can send over and be like, hey, check and see, are you three or four star writing? Could you make it better? And then they can come over and self-check here. So that was my project for today, was fixing this board. So here's the problem. I'm kind of a cheap person. As you can see, this bookshelf has lived its life and seen many better days. And honest to goodness, I should just replace it. But I really like this bookshelf. It fits perfectly in the window. I like that it's black because it contrasts nicely with the white blinds and the bright light. I like that it's only two shelves and they're the perfect height for my buckets of books. So I just can't quite bear to part with it. So we're gonna try and use a toolkit to build this shelf. Can we just take a moment though and be grateful that I actually have a toolkit because way back in the way back in my first year of teaching and here's a first year teacher tip for you, I used scissors, scissors to build a bookshelf to screw in all the screws and I nearly lost my thumb. So I'm really grateful for a teacher toolkit, ask for one for Christmas. This is the actual toolkit you want and it's pink so that's pretty nice. All right, wish me luck. Good thing I save all the pieces and parts from all my other bookshelves that I built because I just reconstructed this um, zombie bookshelf. I really should just replace it, but you know what? It serves its purpose, and so we're going to keep it around. Anyway, that's all I've got for this setup vlog for you. Don't forget to subscribe. There's more coming, and I can't wait to show you what we do to get this classroom ready for pandemic-style teaching. Yay! All right, I'll see you guys next time. See ya! But actually, this is like exhausting to do. And my knee is not feeling super great. So... <sighs>